Hey, it's John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. Welcome to today's video. We're going to break down the serve of Casper Ruud, who's making big strides on the ATP Tour and they soon be the number one player in the world. He does a lot of great things on his serve. He also does some things that are a little bit unusual. We're going to uh, break it down for you and we're going to do a comparison to a great Roger Federer serve. Now, we've got a special offer for you at the end, so stick around and let's get into the serve here of Casper Ruud. So let's start off here and just take a look at Casper. And uh, you know he's got a great setup in the beginning. Uh, I love the way his feet are set up. So he's sideways to his target line. It's going to set up for a really good coil and good rotation into his serve. And as we move into the serve here, we will see how he comes to the back foot. He rocks back. But what he does is so unusual. Is the ball is not even out of his hand. His hands are barely separated away. And look at the knee bend. Look how he's already down into his knees. Got a lot of knee bend going on here. A lot of knee bend going on here, and yet the ball is still sitting in the hand. And that's a little bit unusual, and it's not exactly what I advocate in my serving lessons either, because for most players, the movement of dropping your leg into your legs while you've got the ball in your hand is a disruption to ball toss accuracy and control. So I'm not really a big fan of this, but again, this is, you know, everyone's a different style, and this has obviously worked beautifully for him. So... So we see him here, the ball's getting out of his hand, he's coming into his pinpoint, he gets into a beautiful, beautiful trophy position. Really amazing. He gets there though while the ball is still rising. Look at the ball still going up. So this is different. Most of the time when players are getting into the trophy position, the ball is beginning, is, is beginning to descend. So they're measuring it right here. They're loaded and they're measuring and the ball is beginning to descend from a higher point. That's more common among players on the WTA and ATP tours. But Casper is already committed to his swing when the ball is still rising. You can see that here. Kind of amazing. His timing is commitment. It has to be spot on perfect. Look how the ball's still rising. And he's into his swing here. Okay. Now what is good about this is it definitely requires a continuous swing motion. So there's no hitches. There's no time for any hitches. Um, potentially you know, the weakness of this could be is that the timing is so difficult because you have to commit to your swing before you really even know if you're going to place the ball with a high level of accuracy or not. So it requires a tremendous control of your ball toss because there's very, very little time to make any adjustments or adaptations because you're already into your swing right here and the ball has not even reached its apex yet. So this takes a tremendous amount of practice to get this, okay? So the movement pattern of Casper is really terrific and fundamentally his serve is amazing. The intervals in which he does things are definitely unique and we'll see that when we start to compare his serve to that of Roger Federer. Okay? But we can see he's in a really beautiful trophy position here. Here he comes up, his racket is on edge. It looks like he's going to cut that ball right in half. His left arm is pulled away beautifully. Watch his left hand pull away and watch. We have a, I did a video a short time ago about the non-dominant hand and how the palm turns away to create shoulder power to drop that left shoulder down and drive that right shoulder up. It's like a pulley. Watch his left hand rotate around there. That palm is beautiful. How it changes its position right here, okay, and pulls down. And we can see that his left hand is down in beautiful sequencing. So when the racket gets to the bottom, his left hand is almost there too. See that? left hand it's hard for me to get this controlled but look where that is there we go so look how the left hand and the racket are almost there at the bottom so again a lot of coaches advocate keep the arm up keep the arm up but the reality is we have to get the arm up no doubt we have to get a stretch right here but then we've got to pull it away to be the catalyst to create shoulder rotation in conjunction with leg drive to get up to that ball okay so here we go we've got a beautiful left hand here coming up into contact on edge, and then look at the nice, beautiful, long axis pronation that he creates in his movement. So, Casper does a lot of great things on his serve, and look at the height he gets, too. I mean, this takes tremendous coordination to time all this together when you have such a low ball toss and you're having to commit to everything so early. But that explains, you know, you know why he gets into his leg so early, because he's going to drive up. And a uh, little bit unusual, but certainly works for him. Okay, So let's take a look at a few more here. And we can take a look at a different angle here as well. He's down in his legs, ball's rising, loads in quickly, pulls the left hand away, look at the palm turn, and up he goes into an explosive movement. Interesting how he's really not even looking at the ball on contact. I'll take another look here. Look how he's not even looking at the ball on contact. 
Amazing, huh? Partly because he doesn't need to. He already knows. He's committed to a swing. He's already committed to a swing right here. He knows where the ball's going to be. He doesn't even look at it. Kind of unusual, but uh, he gets away with it, apparently. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate that. I'd advocate keeping that head up right here. Keep the eyes right there, fixated, fixated. Keep him there, keep him there. But he does turn the head early, uh, which is a bit unusual as well. So next up, we're going to compare Casper's uh, serve to the great Roger Federer serve, show you the fundamental things that they do that are similar, and also show you the things they do that are different as well. Here we go. So let's go ahead and compare the serves of Roger Federer with Casper Ruud. You can see in the beginning when they're setting up, they both have their weight on the front foot and they're leaning forward slightly and the hands are separating away. And let's go to Casper here. And he comes to his back foot to enter into his serve. But as soon as he starts to lift his hands away from each other and lift into the ball placement, he's already bending into his knees. So he's already down into his knees before he's even released the ball. Compare that to Roger Federer and we'll see that he separates his hands away he pretty much stays dead still through this phase. And you can see clearly that his front heel is off the ground. So that would indicate that the majority of his weight is actually on the back foot. So he's very stable on the back foot uh, in, in, this, in this phase of the serve. And then he's still on the back foot when the ball leaves his hand. Look at that. He's very stable. So I'm an advocate of this because I think that the less busy your body is, the more control over the ball you can have to get the ideal placement. And now, once the ball leaves the hand for Roger, now he starts to move into his trophy position and load in so that when the ball gets to the apex, he is loaded in and ready to go. And at this time, you actually have a little window to measure the ball. So he could, he could make a slight adaptation if he needed to, to time the ball. Okay, Where Casper, at this point in the serve, he is already committed to a swing and the ball's not even done rising yet and he's already into his swing. So this really takes a much more precise timing and, and sequencing, in my opinion, um, than the way Roger Federer is playing it. And I think that's why you see the majority of players on the ATP Tour and WTA Tour, for sure, have a higher ball toss. Because I think it just gives you a little bit more adaptability and also gives you the opportunity to load in and get great height. Now, Casper Ruud does get great height in his serve, but uh, I think he's, he's the exception, not the rule. Okay? The mechanics of the swing, the swing patterns, almost identical, really. There's not a whole lot different about those swing patterns. They're really very similar and fundamentally correct. No issues there. It's really the sequencing. You know, you'll see that both players, even though Casper's, you know, he's very quick in his movement, his left hand will pull away. His palm will turn. Look at that palm will turn. Right there, the hand turns, and his hand will pull away. And look at that position. We've talked about this before in other videos where you'll see that the left hand and the racket will actually be at a very similar level. There's a better, better example of it. When the racket gets to the bottom, the left hand is almost matching it. Look at that, right there. Right there, okay? And you'll see that with Roger, it's the same, same thing. You'll see the left hand will pull away. He's a little smoother. His action's not quite as quick, but you'll see right here that the left hand and the racket tip at the bottom are almost similar. So a lot of coaches are strong advocates of keeping the left arm up, keeping the tossing arm up. But yes, you have to get the tossing arm up for sure. But that's so you have something to pull, pull away with and get the shoulder-over-shoulder -shoulder action. The left arm is a big part. It's a catalyst in that movement along with the leg drive to get that shoulder-over-shoulder -shoulder action. Okay. So fundamentally, a lot of things that they do are very similar uh, in terms of this, the technique. It's just the timing in the intervals that are so much different between these two players. Uh, what's best for you? I think you got to experiment, but I would say for the majority of players, I would choose the serve we're seeing here on the right, the serve of the great Roger Federer. I think this is a, a beautiful example of what we should be trying to do. I think it's much easier to execute with this little bit longer interval than with the short interval of Casper Ruud. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you've watched this video to the end, I've got a special gift for you. The first five viewers who leave in the comment section down below, yes, I'd like a free video analysis on my serve. I will provide a free video analysis and give you some advice and ideas on how you can improve your serve. So go ahead and leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching today's video. Also, please give us a like. 
Leave your comments down in the, in the section below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And we look forward to providing you with a lot more videos here in the future at Performance Plus Tennis. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.